Welcome back, everyone. So we're talking about the Fourier series and how you can approximate arbitrary periodic functions by adding up uh, sines and cosines of higher and higher frequencies. Okay, so in this example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna code this up in MATLAB to approximate this triangular hat function using the Fourier series, okay? So um, I have the code already pre-preloaded here. You can download all of these codes at databookuw.com, and they're also all on GitHub for both the MATLAB and the Python versions, okay? So let's walk through this. The first thing we're gonna do in this code is to define our domain. So in this case, I'm gonna define a domain from negative pi to pi. So uh, kind of L is, is pi, and I'm gonna define my X domain from minus L to L, so minus pi to pi, with uh, 1,024 points. And then I'm going to define my hat function. And the way I'm defining this hat function is I'm gonna chop this domain up into quarters, and the first quarter and the last quarter are gonna have a functional value of zero. And then the middle uh, two second and third quarters are gonna have a, a positive slope and a negative slope to make this hat. So that's what you see right here, okay? And I'm just gonna plot this for you. Okay, so this is our triangular hat function uh, on the domain negative pi to pi. And now all of kind of the interesting stuff happens in this code here. This is how we're actually gonna compute the Fourier series. And so I just wrote it out here. I wanted to remind you mathematically what this is. The Fourier series is a sum uh, of, of these Fourier coefficients, a, k, and b, k, times their corresponding cosine and sine functions uh, of increasing frequency. So as k goes up, then the frequency of these uh, cosines and sines goes up also, and they get higher and higher frequency. And you obtain these coefficients a, k, and b, k by projecting your function into, into that basis or with that, that particular kth cosine and kth sine uh, mode. And this, this inner product here is really just a, a dot product if these were data vectors, if these were vectors of data evaluated at discrete values x. Okay, and that's exactly how we're actually computing this in MATLAB. So what we do uh, here, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, compute the, I guess this really should be k equals zero. There's a zeroth mode here. Um, that's what I'm computing here, is just the inner product of f with the constant uh, cosine of zero function, which is just equal to one. Okay, that's here. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is for k equals one to 20, what, I'm, what we're actually gonna do is we're going to approximate this, uh, we're going to approximate this. Instead of a sum to infinity, what we're gonna do is we're going to sum to, to 20, okay? And that's not going to be an exact representation of our function, but what you're gonna see is that as you increase the order uh, from you know, k equals one to two to three and so on up to 20, you get a better and better approximation of this, of this function. Okay, so we're gonna add up k equals one to 20 modes. And the first thing I'm gonna do is compute my a, k, and b, k coefficients by computing these blue inner products here. That's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm literally taking the dot product of f, my function, with that kth cosine and that kth sine mode. Okay, and I have to normalize by like one over pi and, and the dx. Okay, so I have, to, I have to normalize this inner product with my delta x and a one over pi on the outside. Okay, and then I just add up those kth uh, terms in this sum, this a k cosine k plus b k sine of k. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just plot it for you. And I have a little pause here so that uh, every time I increase the order from k equals one to two to three up to 20, you're gonna see a new function pop up on the screen. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, and you can see as you increase the order, you go from yellow through red through dark blue to light blue, and as you keep increasing the order of this uh, Fourier series approximation, you get a better and better and better approximation to this sharp uh, triangular hat function. Okay, so for k equals one, you have this, this kind of uh, single, single wave here, not a very good approximation, but very quickly as you increase the order, you start to, to actually approximate this function quite well. So this is just a, a nice example that shows you um, kind of how you can approximate, at least in this case, continuous functions. So this function um, has, has points, but it is continuous. It doesn't jump at any locations. And so the Fourier series is gonna do a really nice job of approximating this uh, continuous periodic function. Okay, good. 
Now the last thing I want to show you is uh, plotting the amplitudes. So we have all of those A, K, B, K, uh, Fourier coefficients or amplitudes of the cosines and sines that I'm adding up, and I want to plot some of this stuff for you. So here I'm actually going to compute uh, the first hundred of those Fourier coefficients. So I'm going to go from one to, to k max of a hundred. I'm not going to plot all of that. Um, but what I am going to plot is versus the mode number, so from k equals zero to a hundred, what I'm going to plot is what is the mode amplitude, kind of what's the, the magnitude of those Fourier coefficients, and how much um, error is there in my reconstruction. And I think I just caught a small typo in my code. One second here. Okay, divided by pi. I changed my code a little and I made it uh, a little bit nicer, but I have to divide out pi. Okay, so let's make sure that this... Uh, so if you, if you notice, actually, this, this code here is a little bit cleaner than the code in the book. And now let's plot our amplitudes. And I really hope this works. Perfect. Okay, good. So now we have uh, kind of our error performance versus mode number. And so this is what you want. You want this to be a monotonically decreasing function. You want your reconstruction error, kind of how good of an approximation this sum is to my function f. You want that to monotonically decrease as you add more and more and more Fourier modes. And that's uh, something you get for periodic continuous functions is that you get this monotonic decrease in error. And what that means is that if I have a little bit more, um, more computation, I can add a few more of these modes, I can get a little bit better uh, approximation, a little bit lower error. And so this red dot here shows um, a particular uh, truncation, I guess probably here I'm truncating at about seven modes, something like that. And you can see this is the mode amplitude Okay, so it has this interesting kind of oscillating pattern, but the mode error is just going down and down and down. And it's, this is on a log scale, so this is actually very, very low error, even with a few modes. Okay, now this I find kind of interesting is that the mode amplitude has this kind of oscillating pattern every fourth Fourier coefficient. It gets very, very small, and you can actually see that if you walk through um, k equals 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on and so forth. Every fourth coefficient, the function really doesn't change very much, the approximation. Uh, and the only way I can really explain this is this is, must be, have to do with some symmetry in this particular uh, function that I chose. Some, some kind of symmetry is manifesting itself in a very, very small fourth Fourier coefficient. Okay, but the, the upshot here, is that you can approximate functions uh, that are periodic and continuous very, very well with a truncated Fourier series. Okay, so we didn't even have to add up uh, to you know, all infinite modes. We, we truncated at mode 20 and we get a very, very nice approximation of our function. Okay, so now you know how to compute the Fourier series uh, kind of in code in MATLAB by taking these inner products to get these coefficients. You can add up all those uh, cosines and sines and you get really nice function approximations. Okay, thank you.